Hey Power Appers, my name is Robin and today I've got a quick tip for you revolving around a filter type that is not too common but uh, I get asked from time to time how to do this. So did Joshua on Twitter, let's read it really quick. Hey Power Addicts, in my gallery I have two choice columns I'm hoping to filter with two separate combo boxes. Um, the two choice columns and combo boxes both have allow multiple selections. And this one is the hard part, both, both sides having allow multiple selection. So first of all, let's take a look at our data. I've done this with a SharePoint list. I've got a projects list with eight projects and we have a choice column right here for the tools. And in this column, we enabled allow multiple selection. This is a people column and we did the same thing, allow multiple selection. And let's look at both column types. But before we build the solution, I would ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Power Apps content. So let's uh, take a quick look at this demo app and it should work as expected. When I filter for one tool, then only the project with Power Apps pop up. When I filter for a second one, only the two with Power Apps and Power Automate, and then I will filter for a third one, and there's only one project left, leveraging all the tools of the Power Platform together as it should be. And on a side note, this app is full responsive, and I would like to provide it to you. So um, look for the link in the description or um, up on the top and I will have a link to my GitHub so you can download this app, not connect your SharePoint data source, but to uh, some local data you can work with and try everything out and figure out how I did set up the whole container stuff and these beautiful HTML labels right here. Let's not look into that anymore. Let's look into the filter part. And for that, I have copied the screen and removed all the filters from here. So we have just the SharePoint list plugged in right here. So uh, before we continue with the filter function, let's take a quick look at the combo box right here. Um, it's called uh, CMB tools and we use the choices function here, um, which is used in most of the standard forms in Power Apps as well. And now we only want to select one value. So you see this is not connected right now, just a project up here. And now let's use the filter function. And then we want to filter the combo tools dot selected dot value and now we have to use the in function because we have uh, the allow multiple we have a table on the other side in the um, SharePoint so we have to look for tools dot value right here and only the um, projects with power apps remain and this should work for everything but we can only select right one or the tools.selected only refers to the first selected value. So if we do multiple, um, ah, it's actually the, the last. So now I think it's only filtered for power pages. Yes, that is not exactly what we want. And on a side note, we can also write this like here and it also works. So it compares the record um, with, with each other. So this works for one value, but because we have multiple values in here, we have to think of something else. And uh, I don't have the perfect solution for that, but I have a solution for it. So um, it comes with some limitations. So what I try to do in this case is set a max number of, um, of values you want to plug in right here. So um, using these filters, it's usually, usually um, something like three or four values you want to plug in right here and not more. And we will account for three values we can plug in right here. And we will do it 
like this. We will use the index function and now we're changing from selected to selected items. Um, now we get all the selected items back, but for the moment we only want the first. And we will copy this three times. Like I said, we want to account for um, three different uh, values we can plug in. Not too much. And we want the first, the second, and the third one. So let's take a quick look. If we do it like that, then we get all the projects with Power BI, Power Automate, and Power Apps. If we only plug in one or two, we get nothing. So we have to adjust for that. And we do it like this, where we say is blank. So. And then go to the second and third. Let's see if we get a... Yeah, we see the first one is Power Apps. The second one, we didn't find any data because it's not selected. Let's select three. The second one is Power Automate and the third one is Power BI that is selected. And if we would select a fourth one, then nothing uh, would, would happen. Yeah, that's not a good example because all five are plugged in here. And you see now it works. If we only select Power Apps, then we get all the projects with Power Apps. If we select Power Apps and Power Automate, we get all with, with these two. Let's try something else. And then, yeah, we can, mix and match right here power pages then two should remain if we um, filter for a fourth one like power bi then nothing should happen yes perfectly because we only accounted the first three um, records right here like power apps power virtual agents and power pages and power bi, uh, BI is the fourth one and is not plugged in right here, right now. So we, if we want that, we would have to adjust right here, add another filter. And now only this one remains because the fourth record is also uh, plugged into the filter. And let's take a quick look to the finished app right here where i did exactly the same thing for the people columns um there it doesn't work to compare the records like i said this app is is downloadable i try to plug in static data have a lots of fun thanks for watching and joshua i hope i helped you ton um, let me know in the comments if that is exactly what you wanted and see you next time probably with a much much more container stuff because at the moment I just like building responsive apps with, uh, with containers. Mm -hmm.